Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Crystal Starnes Show with your host, Crystal Starnes, on Just TV. Tonight, we have two special guests that are coming on the show, Pepper J and John Michael Ferrari. Pepper J is an award-winning music producer for over 32 years. Pepper has also produced music for John Michael Ferrari for over 32 years, and he is a multiple award-winning singer, songwriter, entertainer. And let's welcome Pepper J and John Michael Ferrari to the show. Hi, Crystal. Hi. Thanks for having us. Hi, Crystal. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on the show. I'm so happy to have you on here. So I guess what I would like to know is a little bit of your background. Um, we could start off with you, Pepper. Um, maybe tell the audience a little bit about who you are and your background. Well, thank you. I, uh, when I was little, my grandmother was my best friend and her best friend was Sophie Tucker. Uh, Sophie Tucker was a, an entertainer. They used to call her the last of the big hot mamas. She would uh, open for the Rat Pack. Dean Martin, Sinatra. I saw a lot of, you know, a lot of entertainers and Sophie on the stage. And that's how I spent my childhood is with all these entertainers and the Moulin Rouge, Coconut Grove, uh, just about every showroom in Las Vegas at the time. And I used to put on backyard plays. I used to be in plays, used to put on musical things. And that's just always been with me my entire life. When I accidentally was introduced to John Michael, he was performing at a resort. I saw something, I saw something extremely special and I propositioned him. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, I, I think you can go from the lounge, which you're very, very good, to the main showroom, and I, I can make that happen. And he said, okay. <laughs> 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 and um, yeah, we've been working together since 1990. Wow, that's amazing. What about you, John? Well, I started off as a little kid. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I was small and then I grew. Yeah, uh, you know, I've always been interested in music ever since I, I can remember. Uh, I got my first guitar when I was eight years old and I couldn't figure out which way I hold the guitar, left-handed or right-handed, because I'm left-handed. So I looked at a picture of Elvis and I thought, however he's holding the guitar, that's how I'm holding it. And that's what I did. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> And I just learned, I just stayed with music and I played music in high school and in bands and, you know, um, it, it was a good life, you know, playing uh, small clubs, casinos, paying my dues, you know, that's the whole thing of, uh, as an artist starting out, you got to pay your dues, that's how you learn your craft. Right. Well, what, um, did you... Either of you ever faced challenges um, when you were doing this, like going through the ranks, like over the years? Well, yeah, I mean, but that's that's how you learn. You know, when you when you do something that doesn't work, you know that that doesn't mean you you should stop. It means you need to rearrange and rethink what you're doing because what you're doing isn't working. So you have to find another way to make it work. That's the whole idea, you know. Uh, paying your dues, learning how to overcome those obstacles, if they're really obstacles, you know, uh, but that's your learning process. Without them, you wouldn't learn. They're challenges. Yeah. Right. Um, so both of you have awards that you've gotten over the years, and I believe um, you, John, just got a, one recently um, in Nashville. Um, so if you just want to touch on that, like your awards, if you want to start off, John, and then Pepper, you can start you know go after him well it's nice to be recognized for what you do especially from your peers and other people that are doing what you want to do for many years i would travel and tour and i would play what they call third part music uh, other people's songs you know and it was nice i mean you make a, an okay living doing that but you're always doing other people's other artists songs and you don't get recognized as a real artist. You're just kind of like, you're over in the corner 
playing all the uh, somebody else's hit songs. But the moment you start doing your own songs, everything changes. It, it, it's uh, people recognize you differently. Um, you know, I would have never gotten those awards had I not moved into the realm of writing as a songwriter and putting songs out because everybody starts off doing a band. Uh, you know, the Eagles started off as just a cover band. The Beatles started off as a cover band. You know, uh, everybody starts off as a cover band. It's when you make that transition that your career can really happen. Uh, you know, if you have somebody like Pepper, you know, you write good songs, but you have to have somebody who knows the business and how to get you out there and promote you. Um, that, that's a big part of it. Uh, John uh, has been very blessed with awards. I mean, just this last couple of years, he was uh, Singer-Songwriter of the Year in 2019 by the Producers' uh, Choice Honors. And uh, he was fan fa favorite, fan favorite at the Independent Music Awards. And he was Crossover Artist of the Year with the New Music Weekly Awards. Yeah. And one of his songs uh, was Peace Song of the Year. Uh, John will tell you the story that was at an Oscar party in Beverly Hills. Recently, he was a breakout artist of the year and uh, the Easy Way, that's E-Z-W-A-Y Golden Gala. He was just voted, what were you just voted? Oh yes, best performer of the year. Cause that's what he is more than anything. He's a performer, he just loves to make people laugh. Let me just tell Tiny to get off the table. It's okay. That's okay. Come here, little baby. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't even remember all of his awards, but... Um, he had a lot, it seemed like. He'd been very generous in his direction and most deserving, I think. But that's why I encourage people, if you're going to be in this business, learn to sing and write your own songs, because then you have a, an opportunity to move up you then somebody can uh, you know recognize your talent and make more money <laughs> yeah you know because you can play cover bands and no matter how good you are as a cover artist and i've, I've met people who are just terrific uh you're still not going to be recognized no matter how well you do whitney houston songs you know it's not until you do your own songs that you'll really be recognized for who you are as a singer songwriter artist so I encourage people to to do that as much as possible. Wow. Well, your music, I've listened to some of it and I just, I love it. And um, maybe you could touch on some of the songs, maybe like the song, um, is it Forever? Um, Forever is Not Enough. You want to touch on why, um, you know, how you come up with the name and the song and um, we can go from there. Well, you know, I, I meet people, I see people, um, and and they they remind me of something or they spark a, an interest. And sometimes you think of a situation where you know you you think I, I would love to be with that person, and I, and I build a story around that. You know, and being with somebody. I mean, we've all been around somebody where you know time goes by fast. You're with that person, and it's just like, where's the time go? It just keeps going on so fast. And you think, and I thought to myself, well, you know, forever is just not enough, you know, to be with somebody you enjoy being, you know, it's like, if I could be with you forever, it's still not enough time to be with you, you know, and, and I, and I came up with that concept and I thought, oh, I'll write a song about that. And, and that's what I did with that song. And it was, uh, that was actually came pretty easy for me that one. <laughs> some of them I had to work at, some of them come easier than others. Well, I, um, I can share the song if everybody wants to see the video. So I'll do that right now. Sometimes it's just like forever is not enough. You ever been with somebody like that? is not enough. Baby, ooh, we were a perfect night 
we had together, baby. Ooh, I want this moment to last forever. Funny how fast time can put on its wings when we're together. It's heaven for. Together, our love is true. Forever is not enough time to spend with you. Baby, ooh, -wee. what a perfect dream we have together. Baby, ooh, -wee. I've got your sweetness. Bracelet in me. Funny how fast time can put on its wings when we're together. It's seven. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. I would particularly want to say thank you for taking time out of your life and coming here and spending it with us tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's the first that's time I've seen the whole video. Yeah. Go ahead. No, that's the first time I've seen the whole video. Oh. <laughs> it was really good. I was going to tell you that you did a really good job, both of you, of making that video. Same. And you know, that song is very, um, like that song, I could, I could see that song getting awards because like that really touches your heart. I mean, I almost got teary eyed just watching it oh. you know, and listening to it. You know what I mean? Because oh, it, it is, you so much. you're welcome. Cause it, it is true. I mean, they, life goes very quickly and people don't realize it. I know when I was younger, you know, everybody would always say, oh, you know, enjoy it because your life is just going to keep going faster and faster and like when I have kids you know enjoy them because it's going to go quick and, and I didn't realize it but it does it's it goes quick <laughs> so that song is a very very good song well, so thank you so much you're welcome. Thank you. you're welcome. That's our next song, but, uh, I guess that we're pushing out there on the charts and I, when people ask me what kind of songs I write I write basically wedding songs love songs, mm -hmm. wedding songs you know all of right. these can be kind of like a wedding love song, you know. Well, some of them are about losing love. Yeah, but in a happy way. <laughs> <laughs>
There, okay. yeah, you did. Yeah, you both did a really good job on these songs. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank oh, you. We so have good musicians in Nashville. I tell you, it's really a process. We record. We've recorded our last two albums: "Be the Smile on Your Face" and "My Heart Can't Breathe." At Larry Beard, B E A I R D Music Group in Nashville. And uh, they're a wonderful crew and they have the top notch musicians anywhere. Yeah. And you never know, you walk in and all of a sudden there's Garth Brooks, and you know, it's like, okay, we're in the right place for the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you'd gotten an award in Nashville this year. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, which one was that? The okay, so that was the Nashville Music Foundation. Oh, yeah. They they awarded they they crowned you Singer Songwriter of the Year 2022 from uh, Rick Bowman. Al Bowman. Al Bowman, who we met years ago at the Los Angeles at Music the, Awards. At the Los Angeles Music Awards, we were covering it uh, for a magazine for that a we magazine. published at the time. Yeah, so we were there. And we were watching all these stars go up and down the red carpet. And Pepper said, well, maybe one day they'll be giving you an award. And I thought, for what? <laughs> <laughs> and now it's him. <laughs> yeah. So they ended up all these years later giving you know, me. I was walking the red carpet, you know. It's very exciting times. Yeah, that that would be very exciting because Nashville is where all the country singers are. So I think that's and a lot of other, thing. too. They have pop there. They have gospel. Okay. We have a lot of a lot of recording studios in Nashville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and in and around Nashville. Right, it's an interesting town because you know you go there and it's about networking and it's about meeting other people. Uh, most of your opportunities usually come from pe people you meet and, and are nice to. And yeah, mm -hmm. you're nice to, and they introduce you to people, and you introduce them to people. Uh, Aww. <laughs> It's okay. There are six cats in this Quonset hut. Yeah. <laughs> and they're not outside because it's cold here right now in the right. yeah. And then everybody co-writes. There's a lot of co-writing there. I've not really done too much co-writing, but yeah. some. Some. Ray Ligon, working my working my way to Nashville. We're gonna record that in February. Yeah. 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 But uh that's a big thing, co-writing. And, and uh I there's good benefits and and you know, it's interesting because, you know, I, I think as a writer, um, it's easier sometimes to have a co-writer. Sometimes you have two or three co-writers. It's more difficult as an, as you by yourself, but you really develop your skills when you're by yourself because you can't, there's nobody else you depend on, but I depend on Pepper because when, when I write a song and, and she goes through it, I mean, she'll look at the words and she'll say, well, there's too many syllables here. What does this mean here? Oh, here's a really good line, but it doesn't belong in this song. You know, <laughs> I mean, she's really good at that. And 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 then I get my homework back. It's all marked in red. Then you know, I go back to my studio and and redo it, and make the changes. You know, and that's how we work together. So kind of work. If I work anybody, I mean, I I work with her. You know. Yeah. Right. Well, Pepper, you have worn a lot of hats over the years, and your your bio is just so inspiring. I mean, you. you've done so many successful things over your course of your life, and it's just very impressive. Like, yeah. you're like a role model for me. <laughs> so, I'm honored. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, oh, yeah. So, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say, you know, for people who are thinking about recording in the studio, I mean, yeah. I would suggest not to go into a studio unless you have a good producer, somebody who knows you and your music and knows how to communicate with the session leaders uh, and session leaders will communicate those ideas and things to the musicians. The studio musicians, yes, you which mean. are different than the musicians that people play in the band, uh, almost always. Yeah, yeah the um, studio musicians are, are just different, uh, entirely different. We got a cat in our present. It's okay. I'm an animal lover, so it's oh, fine. <laughs> Thank you, my darling. But just, I would just encourage people, you know, it's not easy, but if you can find a producer who's into your music and is knowledgeable. And the other thing is, you know, we're very fortunate. We get a lot of radio play. And there's a thing called radio structure when you're writing songs. If you write in radio structure, 
uh, you have a better chance of getting radio play. play. Mm -hmm. If you don't write in radio structure, you're not going to get it on the radio. Almost never. Yeah. There are exceptions. He has a, a song on his 2020 album. The album was Be the Smile on Your Face, and the song was Peggy Sue's. Well, Peggy Sue's is six and a half minutes long, <laughs> and uh, it just normally would not get any play. But I sent the album, the CD, to a couple of DJs over in Australia and New Zealand, whose radio format was two songs, three songs and a commercial, three songs and a commercial. They have to make their money. And he heard Peggy Sue's, and he played it. And then other uh, radio stations there in the area played it. And all of a sudden it got on the charts there. And they were using that one six and a half minute story song. It's a story song for two songs slots. We didn't make it for radio. We had no idea that it was going to end up on the radio. We... But I didn't write it for radio. I wrote That's it right. for the fans that bought the CD because I wanted to give them something extra, extra. something different, you know, uh, well, here's something, take a listen to this, you know? Um, and I do that, uh, you know, I write four or five songs that are radio structure. So we have an opportunity to get our songs on the radio. We've been very fortunate. And then I write some other songs that are close to radio structure, but I'm taking a little bit more liberties in, in creativity that I want to take. And those are for the people who buy the CDs and they get to listen to something a little different, but it's still in the same genre. It's pretty commercial either way, though. Right. Yeah. Would you have um, any upcoming shows like for 2023 or even, I guess, the rest of 2022? Well, we uh, have several shows in Nashville in December 2022. Um, I sort of put them all in the same area. Let's see. What is it? Uh, December 1st, John will be performing at the Commodore Grill at a, on a writer's round. Uh, that'll be, I think, around 5.30. Uh, then the December 6th, 7th. Oh, let's see. First, second, third. December 3rd, he's at noon. I forget where you are. You know what? The listening room. Go to, no, that's on the Monday. Mm -hmm. Go, to, please, if you would, to johnmichaelferrari.com. John Michael Ferrari, like the car, F E R R A R I dot com. And when you get to the website, click on tour. That'll, you'll always know whether it's you're listening to this now or you're listening to it four or five, six months ago. Now, a week from now, you'll always know where he's performing. And so we'll be performing in Nashville starting December 1st. Yeah, for a while. Perfect. Yeah. And that was the next question I was going to ask, you know, just to say where they can find you. But, um, you, they can also go to your webpage too, right, Pepper? Sure, Pepper J, Pepper like salt and pepper, and then jay.com. But and there's a link right there. You'll see John's face. Just click that, and you can get to John Michael's uh, website. His has all of his social media right there to click. So please like, follow, subscribe, all the different things. You know, we we appreciate you. You know, and now there are thousands of people that are you know, following him on Spotify and and YouTube and Facebook and, and all these things. And we just really appreciate the people. We're, we're so glad that you like our music. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, it's awesome. And um, what you're doing is amazing. Um, I just think that the songs are, they touch people's hearts and um, they mean something and they're worth listening to. So anyone out there that's listening, or watching this show, um, make sure you go to johnmichaelferrari.com and check out his Thank music because so it much. is Thank amazing. You. We have uh, several songs now on the charts, uh, Masquerading in the Night and Paint You a Love Song. I think those two are right now on the charts and and uh, and Forever's Not Enough will be coming up later on after that, I guess. Well, it's interesting, you know, he was named, they named him Crossover Artist of the Year. I think that was 2021. And uh, that same song, uh, Masquerading in the Night, is on country charts, mm -hmm. as well as what they call mainstream or pop charts. And then Paint You a Love Song is also on country charts. As a matter of fact, it's number two. I'm hoping it goes to number one tomorrow on the Independent uh, Music Network chart. But uh, it's also on country and pop 
So it just goes to show you, of course, you put in a slide guitar, then they think, oh, okay, maybe it's country too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, I wanted to say something to a lot of the artists out there, you know, being an independent artist, there's a lot of benefits to that. Uh, there's a lot of work. It's nice to be signed to a label, but you know, you lose a lot of creative, uh, creative input. And money. And money. And power. Yeah, when you're uh, assigned to a label. And even though it may be hundreds of thousands and sometimes millions of dollars, it doesn't always go to the artist. You know, uh, the, the record company takes a big share out of that. But as an independent artist, you make your decisions. Uh, you, song, you sing whatever songs you want. You get the, your royalties. But it does take a lot of work. I mean, Pepper's on working this all day long from the time she gets up early in the morning. You know, I'll go out, uh, you know, get up at six and she's already on the computer talking to people all over the world, communicating with them, sending them CDs, uh, doing bookings. I mean, she's doing it all. You know, uh, and that's what record companies do. I would like to say two things about that. First of all, the independent artist world is very large now. Uh, with internet radio, just about anyone can start a radio station anywhere. And, uh, you know, you think, okay, they only have five, 600 people. You turn around, they've got 6,000 people, and then they got 36,000 people watching, you know. So there's all sorts of outlets. There's contests. There are radio charts like uh, John was just number one for several weeks on something called Museboat, M-U-S-E-B-O-A-T.com. They have different charts and stuff on it and uh, different things. So there's a big world for indie artists. It takes time. It takes time to connect and to network and to be part of that. If you had the opportunity to be signed, look at it very carefully and please let somebody with knowledge preferably an entertainment lawyer. It's better to spend five, six, seven hundred dollars on a lawyer to look over something and see what the deal is and negotiate for you. Because even as an early artist, there you have some negotiation room there. And uh, don't be afraid to be signed because there's a lot of advantages too, especially yeah. being known, being fame. But the problem becomes is most people don't have the appropriate people to look over the paperwork before they sign. Even people, and I don't want to name names, but that you know out there in the world that are very popular, very famous, they got messed up for many, many years because of the paperwork that they signed. And, and here they are on all these charts and different things, and they're penniless, you know. It's, so yeah. have the appropriate people look it over your paperwork. And being an independent artist, you know, there's a camaraderie, I think, among a lot of the independent artists. You know, uh, they're all trying to help each other. They're, you know, they try. I mean, there is a competition there, but the competition is usually with yourself. You just kind of want to do better and better. But there is a camaraderie that everybody has certain respect, like, because they know and I know what they're going through. Every singer songwriter, they go through the same process I go through. We all share that. Uh, you look at a blank piece of paper and think, what am I going to write on there? You know, is anything going to show up? You're playing the <laughs> guitar, you know. There's, a, you know, your uh, kind of, what do they call it, solitude? Uh, yeah, and you know, if you have what writer's block and you're a writer, you're a songwriter or a writer, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all. Don't try to force it. I mean, there are writers that work for different companies that they have to churn out so many songs a day and maybe there's 16 or 16 or six in a room and da 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 and you have that. But if you're an independent writer and you're writing or songwriting, don't worry about it if you have writer's blocks. Uh, I suggest just breathe, look up at the sky, look in the clouds. Uh, John has all sorts of ideas <laughs> on on just kind of like letting go and, and letting God, you know, if you understand what I'm saying, just let the inspiration flow through you, observe and things you see in the world, give you ideas and start writing down. Doesn't matter if it turns into a song or not, just brainstorm and write it down. But there is a technique uh, as a songwriter. You, you, there is a lot of stuff to understand about songwriting. And if you don't know you're gonna have a more difficult time to make a song interesting. There are techniques and tricks that you can do to make your song more interesting. Go to YouTube. 
if you want to be a beginning uh, songwriter, everybody in the world has an opinion. There are probably a thousand songwriters that are going to tell you, you know, how to be doing this, that, and the other. You just take from each thing that you think what works for you and keep working at it, perseverance. And yeah, or you can get with somebody who is an experienced songwriter. Find and, a mentor. And have them mentor you and show you uh, how to put together a song. You know, you can put together a song has nothing to do with inspiration, but here it is, you know, there's the format and here's the, the words and it doesn't, when you're starting off, it doesn't matter what the words are. You're looking at the syllables. Syllables are sometimes more interesting <laughs> or more important than just the words. Do the syllables match the music? Yeah. You know, you can, you can change the words later on, get the syllables right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In that structure. So hopefully that helps some people out there that are interested in being in the music business and being a singer songwriter. Right. Well, I want to thank both of you for coming on today. And is there anything else that you want to tell the audience? JohnMichaelFerrari.com, please uh, go out there and, and connect to him with the YouTube and everything. We would really appreciate that. Contact us, the direct, you know, DM us, either Pepper J or John Michael Ferrari songwriter. You know, we love we love it when you guys contact us and send us things. And, if you have and, questions. And all, if you have questions or anything. Also, both on JohnMichaelFerrari.com and PepperJ.com, we're putting out a new poll. I just noticed today that there were 400 votes so far on his last album, which is uh, My Heart Can't Breathe. If you go to either of those sites, you can hear a little snippet of each of oh, the yeah. songs that are on that album. And you can vote for the one that you think is your favorite. And it's... Uh, it turned out to be very interesting yeah, to don't see. Your thing. No, it does, you don't have to leave an email or anything. No. But yeah, get involved with us. Um, we'd love to have you be part of our community. Thank you. Yeah, it would be nice. That's awesome. Yeah, and definitely check out that song. It's a great song. Um, Baby, ooh -wee. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's a great song. Well, thank, thank you so you. much, Crystal, for having us. Oh, thank you're you. welcome. And thank you for coming on. I enjoyed having you on the show. And everyone out there, um, till next time, I hope everyone has a blessed evening. Take care, everyone. <laughs>